Today we are going to be making our own wonder portraits. First, to make a portrait, I'm going to start with an oval shape, but it is a little bit different than an oval because an oval would be equal all the way around. However, your head is a little bit bigger on the top than it is the bottom, so I'm going to actually make it look like an upside down egg. That is going to be the beginning of my portrait. And most portraits start there at the oval for the face. Next, what I'm going to do is I am going to create my hairline. So I have nice long curly hair, so I'm actually going to make swerved lines that come out and it should just look like the silhouette of my hair. It should not actually have strands. Now if you have shorter hair or straight hair, those lines might look a little different. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my eyeball, which is more like a football shape than it is an oval. So I'm going to add a little football in here. And then I'm going to add a circle that is going to become my iris. This is the colored part of your eyeball. And then inside another circle will become the pupil. Once I am done with that step, I'm going to take a permanent marker. And yes, it is important that it is a permanent marker. If you do not have a permanent marker, you can go ahead and use a black crayon as long as it is not washable. You want a basic old black crayon. It will work just fine. I'm going to go over all my lines that I've already created with the permanent marker. I added a little white dot up there for my catch light. So now I'm going to surround my portrait with words that describe me. So I obviously pulled that I'm an artist up there in my fanciest handwriting. You can put words that describe you as long as they're appropriate around your portrait. Next, I'm going to take either a marker or a crayon and I am going to color in the parts that are the hair. So I just used a basic marker on this one because I'm not worried about if this gets wet because all of the hair is gonna be black. So I don't have to worry about that too much. I'm gonna color all that in using that good craftsmanship, making sure I'm covering up all my white space, coloring in the same direction and great. Now I'm going to add watercolor paints. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose either warm colors or cool colors. I happen to like cool colors, so I'm going to be using those. Not to mention the fact that my eyeball is actually blue. So I wanna make my eyeball blue here. And then I'm going to start adding cool colors to the face of my portrait. I'm going to do something called a wet on wet technique. That means I'm going to add water to my painting first and then add wet paint to the wet paper. That allows the colors to dance around and bleed into each other and make a cool tie dye effect, which I think will be very fancy for my portrait. While you're working on this, let's go over a couple watercolor basics. This, my friends, is a paintbrush. It is not a toothbrush or a toilet brush. You are not going to scrub this brush. You are barely touching the top, very gentle with it because it's a lot like a grandma. Grandma doesn't want her hair messed with, and neither does this paintbrush. So I am going to be very light with my motions. Now, you might notice that I am putting colors next to each other. And when I put the water 
on top of the colors, they bleed. So I'm not going to put one color on top of another color on top of another color and have a huge mess. I'm putting them next to each other and letting them bleed together. I want to make sure that there is always a puddle of water underneath my paintbrush. That is all. Take a picture and upload it to Edsby. Miss you, darlings.